Hey everybody, Miss Moore. I'm going to discuss population pyramids. So population pyramid uh, is an inverted bar graph that shows us the distribution of population. At the base, we'll see younger, and then at uh, the top, we'll see our elderly. A few things that a population pyramid can show, the age distribution, the dependency ratio, so these are people that are too young to work, or too old to work. Um, so they're referred to as our, our dependency. So youth would be under 15, elderly would be over 65. And then we'll also look at the sex ratio. So the men, um, the amount of men in, in a population and the amount of women. All right. So our population pyramid, um, the population composition is broken into the percentage of males and females in a country, males on the left and females on the right. Also, our age groups are broken up into cohorts. These are in um, increments of five years. So zero to four is our first cohort. And the length of the bar graph will demonstrate um, the percentage or number of gender or age um, in a particular population. So our pyramids are formed by the crude birth rates. So again, if it is a stage two country, which typically has higher birth rates, um, their base is going to be a little bit wider. If we're talking about a stage five country, because people are living longer, you may see it wider at the top. Now, not to the same extent as you would see um, a stage two country at the base, but you'll see um, people living longer. All right. Now, each uh, group is known as a co cohort, and in some um, groups, uh, those, gr those cohorts, those groups, um, those generations are um, termed together. So we have our baby boomers, we have our Generation X, and then we have our millennials. Now for our baby boomers, um, there's an echo, and an echo would be, you'd see that in the millennials. Um, those were their children. Now, remember, AP likes to look at scale. So are we talking local, regional, national, globally? And with population pyramids, you can look at it at really any scale. We can look locally, regionally, nationally, and globally. So if we look at our groupings, again, we have our cohorts. So um, right here, right, 15 to 19, so um, of five-year ranges. All right, then we have our baby boomers cohort. All right, our dependency ratio. So the dependency rate is compared um, to the people they depend on in that um, age range, right? So uh, the workforce would be 15 to 65. The youth dependency would be from 0 to 14. And then our elderly would be above 65. And keep in mind, the needs of the dependency ratios will be different. In a stage two country, you're going to need education, child care, um, medical care in both, but different types because there's uh, more children. Um, if we look at a more developed country that has a higher elderly dependency ratio, um, one, we're going to see graying power. So uh, the um, elderly ratio, they may have what's referred to as graying power, so they may have more political pull, they may have some more social pull um, in terms of um, what industries are producing for them. And again, this is the, the group that they depend on right there. All right. The differences, as I already mentioned, if there are um, more people over 65, they have graying power. And you're going to see that in Western Europe, um, in Japan. Um, and again, they will have social uh, services and health care um, for the elderly. Now, we do have what's referred to as the elderly support ratio. This is the number of working people, so the ages of 15 to 64, divided by the people that are um, 65 because they'll be supporting them. Now, as I mentioned, population pyramids can be looked at at um, a local level. And here we see Naples, Florida, Florida, and we see a higher um, elderly uh, ratio. So again, this must be a retirement community because you see um, more um, people 60 um, and above. All right, again, um, in places that we see um, more youthful um, 
population pyramids or have higher youth dependency ratios, we're going to see that in places like Sub-Saharan Africa, where they're going to have a lot of people under 15. So again, the needs of those countries will be different than a country that has a higher um, elderly ratio. So they'll need um, education, um, employment, and they will have one of the economic consequences is that they do have a growing workforce. But keep in mind, one of the things that I've already mentioned is that as you see these wide bases, um, even if countries try to um, you start to limit their children, they'll have what's referred to as demographic momentum. That's a hidden momentum that you'll have these um, these groups that will still be have yet to reach their childbearing years, and when they do, they'll they'll still have um, children. If you want to think of demographic momentum uh, like you know, riding a bike. If you're going down a hill and you try to slam on your brakes, your body is still going to go forward because you have that momentum. So again, that's the same with demographics. Because you have um, people that are going to move into their childbearing years or a large number of them, they're still going to be having children. So it will take a while for the population um, to decline. Our sex ratio is the number of men per 100 females. Um, the more males that are born, um, but they have higher death rates, you see that in Europe and Western Europe. Typically, we see higher life expectancy for women. Um, more immigration will be um, uh, migrating, it will be more men. And with uh, Ravenstein's uh, migration laws, most males will be going internationally. And again, using um, our population pyramids, we can kind of tell a story. If they uh, have a high crude birth rate, they may have a wider base. War um, may produce more females because males were lost um, in the war. We may see traditionally uh, a culture favoring males, and we definitely see this in China. And with their one child policy, um, it really put uh, has created a lopsided pyramid that will have social consequences um, for China um, as these kids are reaching their marital ages and also childbearing years. Better health care means that you have more elderly, less health care or less birth control means you're going to have more children. Um, more women that are in their childbearing years, you're going to typically see a higher total fertility rate. And if we look at kind of roughly the shapes of pyramids, if we see that more uh, triangle right here, triangular, it's going to be faster growing um, population and they'll typically be a stage two. Where we start to see the base reducing um, is going to be our stage three and that moderate growth. Where we see more of a column with slow growth, we're going to see a stage four. And then where we start to see uh, more people up top um, and we see a reduction in the population will be our stage five. They're shrinking. Now keep in mind, um, this can be our pyramids can be used to predict the stage of demographic transition. And we can also use it to predict um, future needs of a country. Are they going to need to make flexible um, immigration laws because they need um, people to migrate to their country because they have a reduced workforce? Um, do they need to um, think about incentives to get people to have children, so pronatal policies? So again, we can look at the future needs of a country. So LDCs will have many young people and will continue to grow. And MDCs um, with even distribution will remain balanced, um, but will eventually decline. Now, if we look at this, we can see a developing or poor country. And you can tell that based on the fact that they have a wider base and they have a very narrow top. Then we see a developed country. And then we see a developed rich country because we see more people um, uh, in uh, the 60 plus age group. And again, you continue to see the birth rates declining. Now, as I said, we can look at a local level and I wanna point out, um, we've already looked at Naples, Florida as a retirement, but then I wanna look at Alaska and we can see so many men right here. What could be the reason that we would see a lopsided pyramid in Alaska? So we could determine maybe it's a military base, but since um, one of the primary job sectors in Alaska would be fishing, it's probably an area for men to fish or um, get crabs. 
And that's it.